Hey guys, so today's video will be about a 60% mechanical keyboard that offers a lot of value. So we'll be taking a look at the Mantis Tech GK3-61 and it was sent by the good folks over at Banggood, so thanks to them. And at the moment it's being priced really close to the AND Pro, which makes it a really great option if you're in the market for a board like that. So without waiting any further, We'll take a look at it. So as you can see, it's a 60% mechanical keyboard, so you get no arrow keys nor numpad. It features double shot ABS keycaps, so they won't wear out over time, although the second functions are printed, so these could wear out a bit. The light goes through the legends and they feel pretty good, but you can always swap them out as the keyboard has a standard layout and everything is Cherry MX compatible. Another great feature this keyboard has is that it features real Cherry MX switches with RGB LEDs and it's quite surprising for the price. And they feel like real Cherry switches, so I guess they're legit. I got them in brown, but they're also available in blue and red. And the stabilizers are Cherry compatible too. I don't think they're genuine cherry ones, but they're good enough, the keys don't stick and they're not loose, which is the important part. It connects over micro USB, so I can use a magnetic cable to easily swap between keyboards. That's actually what I do with my N Pro, so it's pretty cool this keyboard also allows me to do that. It also features an on-off switch, which is quite cool as the keyboard supports Bluetooth, so you can turn it off to save battery. And the nice thing about it is that it's only considered when the keyboard isn't plugged, which is a nice touch as it can be auto turned off when unplugged. The case is made out of plastic and the screws are under, which is quite unusual. On my two other 60% mechanical keyboards, the screws are on top. So in that case, you screw the case in the plate. It's only available in black at the moment too. And the board seems custom as it's different from what's in my poker and and pro. The battery is quite small too, so I would not expect the board to last for weeks over Bluetooth, especially with the LEDs on. As for lighting, you get a quite complete package. So there's, I think, 18 lighting modes built in with no software needed. So you get static colors, animations like ripples, breathing, waves, circular motions, and much more. And you also get various animations that are triggered via key presses as well. You can change the speed of the animations too using key combinations and on the static mode you can also switch between multiple preset colors and you can also adjust brightness directly in the keyboard. I have to say that I'm quite impressed with the built-in lighting modes and I'd say they're on par with what you get from big brands like Corsair, Logitech and Razer. The colors are vibrant and they're exactly what you would expect from uh, Cherry MX RGB switches. The Bluetooth connectivity is pretty good too. I wouldn't game on it though as it has some jitter from time to time and it's not as responsive as wired and there's a perceivable delay. But for typing or casual PC usage, it's good enough. I tested it on my gaming PC and on my MacBook and I had no connectivity issues and it was reactive enough for, let's say, typing or coding. And you can switch between wired and Bluetooth connection with the function plus tab keys, so it's quite easy to use. And you can also use the Bluetooth mode while plugged, so you can easily switch between a PC and a smartphone, as an example. So as you can see, the keyboard has a lot of nice features, but there's also a desktop app and it's actually pretty nice. It's not super easy to find though, but there's a link in the product's description, so Check it out if you're interested. So you get to save multiple profiles. You can actually remap most of the keys to, let's say, another key, a mouse click, a macro, a key combo, or a multimedia hotkey. It's pretty interesting, but you can't remap the second function layer, and you can't relocate the function key, which is an issue that I'll talk about later in my case. You also get to change the LED colors and animations, so you get full control on that as well. So you get all the built-in animations, plus you get to change the direction of the animation. And you also get a key-by-key -key color configurator. So it works really well and it feels close to something you would get from Logitech, Corsair and Razer, as I said earlier. So basically, there's really a lot of customization in that area. There's also a gaming mode section, which lets you disable certain keys and key combos. And finally, you can record macros with delays between keystrokes. So that's pretty nice if you're into that. So as of now, it seems like quite an amazing keyboard and it's damn near perfect. The only thing I don't like about it is that it doesn't have the standard 60% second layer layout. 
the function key is swapped with the apps key, and WASD doesn't become arrow keys when combined with the function key. Instead, the control, alt, apps, and question mark keys are used, which I'm not used to at all. And I can't seem to change it, and I wouldn't want to get used to both layouts, as I have two other 60% boards that work the other way around, so to me, it's quite a bummer. However, I'm sure that a software update could allow that, so maybe it will change someday. Now, if you compare it against the AMP Pro, it wins in pretty much every category. It has Cherry MX switches instead of Gatorons, which typically cost more and are regarded as higher quality switches, although you could still prefer the Gatorons more. The color saturation is better too, even on the black plate. And you get an on-off switch, something that has been requested by a lot of AMP Pro users. The lighting customization is far superior as well, and the app is much more professional, more complete, and less buggy. The AMP Pro doesn't have an official desktop app, although there's one available that's been coded by a user, but the official mobile app is actually not that great. The firmware is also much more stable on the Mantis tech, you actually get to reset your AND Pro sometimes. And you get more remapping options on the Mantis Tech Board too. The stabilizers are much better as well, they don't wobble, and they're Cherry MX compatible, where the AND Pro stabilizer stems are slightly too small for third-party keycaps, requiring some mods in order to install other keycaps. And the AND Pro loses its settings whenever the battery drains, which is quite dumb. So the only advantage the AND Pro has is that it uses the more standard second layer layout. But if you don't care about that, or you're simply not used to a specific 60% layout yet, then it's not really an issue. So just before I end the video, I'll have a little sound test, just so you know how it sounds compared to the AND Pro and my poker keyboard. So all in all, this keyboard is quite amazing. And if you're interested in a cheap but really good 60% mechanical keyboard, this unit is a great option. As I said earlier, I would actually recommend it over the AND Pro as of now. And I think the quality is up a notch with this board. So hope you guys enjoyed this review of the Mantis Tech GK3-61. And I'll have links in the description to know where you can buy it. So make sure you like the video if you did. Otherwise, let me know what you would change. And don't forget to subscribe if you still haven't already, as I'll see you in the next video.